I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Now, today I got a question, and this is one that a lot of people have the same question, so this is perfect. Don Johnson, well, he goes by Donald Johnson, but we imagine he lives in Hawaii and is dashing and wears a white suit. Don Johnson asks us, Scott Allen, I wouldn't, well, I want to move to Nicaragua within the next four to six weeks, maybe eight weeks, and I would appreciate any advice that you can give me about places to live that are very inexpensive. I don't have a huge social security check, so I need to be concerned about the price. A lot of people want to be concerned about the price regardless of the reason. It's nice to live frugal sometimes if you're able. So we're going to go into exactly what regions of Nicaragua are going to be open to you for the maximum of cost savings as far as cost of living right after the bus. Donald, so before we get started, I want to preface this, right? We're talking about the nation of Nicaragua. We're here in Central, Central America. And for those who are not aware, Nicaragua is outrageously affordable. Across the board, you don't have really high cost areas. It's not going to be a major concern. That doesn't mean that you don't want to be cost conscious when you're looking for a place to live, but you do want to be aware that we're not talking about a country where you've got hot spots that are costing three or four times as much as another location. We have very isolated spots that are going to be a little bit less than that. You could afford to live probably anywhere in the country. We're talking about a cost savings versus other countries in the region that is so enormous that the changes, the variations within the country are probably going to be mostly pointless. But that doesn't mean we want to be foolish and spend money when it's not necessary. And the places that are advertised to foreigners, to expats or potential expats, are nearly always going to be the most expensive or very close to it. So it's more about eliminating the very isolated higher cost, not high cost, but higher cost locations uh, and leaving large areas that are going to make a lot of sense. Now, of course, there's more consideration than just rent. We need to think about general cost of living, what it's going to take for everything. You could have a place, for example, and I don't know the exact cost, but if you were going to go look at someplace like Bonanza uh, or Rosita, probably you're going to find that the cost of housing would be much lower than the rest of the country. You'd be like, this is such a deal. And then you'd realize that the cost of food and shopping and other, like a single trip to go deal with anything would more than uh, make up for any cost savings you would get in housing. So we're going to take all that into consideration as best as we can. So when we're looking at Nicaragua, let's jump into a map and actually just look at some zones. This is going to be what's most meaningful and useful because we're going to be talking about really big areas. So let's start with what are the high cost areas? Let's knock those out right at the beginning and not worry about them. If we're in, uh, we're going to start in southern Nicaragua. So in the region, Costa Rica is the most expensive thing in the region. Things that border Costa Rica are going to be a little bit more expensive just because you have a lot of spillover of traffic and shopping and, and there's just it just happens, right? Same, same anywhere. Uh, the northern border is with Honduras, which is a similar overall cost of living uh, as Nicaragua, higher, but not by much. Um, and, and so we don't have the same effect there. So when we get down to southern Nicaragua, this is going to be in the west. Now in the east, we're basically not going to look at this. The east is very remote and it is extremely low cost of housing, uh, but the general cost of living is not going to be that much lower unless you're looking for an off-the-grid lifestyle. If you're looking for one of those extreme off-the-grid situations or you really just want, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the East Coast, of course. If you want Caribbean non-island style living, that is available out there, but you're going to be very remote. It's a very low income area and there isn't a lot of traffic going to and from so if you want to do anything like shop get to a hospital obviously they have hospitals but get to a larger hospital get to an airport all those things are going to be a lot more limited so if you're on a tight budget it's going to very rarely make sense to consider anything out east at all basically you can knock that out if you're really interested in it, of course it's worth looking at, but unless you have a very uh, specific need to be on the East Coast, it is the West Coast, the Pacific Coast, and not really on the water likely, that's going to be what makes sense. The majority of Nicaraguans live inland, not on the water, and most of the good pricing is going to be inland. Of course, being accessible to the beach is fantastic, and that's how Nicaraguans tend to like to live. Inland a little bit, but not that far from the beach, for the majority. Anyway. 
so we are going to start in the very south. The famous location in the south of Nicaragua is San Juan del Sur. This is also famously its most expensive place. So let's just take that off the table. If you had money, then a lot of expats are going to be like, oh, I don't mind spending extra, then San Juan del Sur could be a great solution for a lot of people. But on a tight budget, if there's one place you want to just take off the table, that is going to be it. No place in the country is going to come close to San Juan del Sur for being expensive, at least as a region. There are isolated communities in the capital that will be crazy expensive. The island of Ometepe. You generally can live within reason on Ometepe. It's not super expensive, but the cost of general things goes up, food and transportation. So that's not really a consideration either if you're on a tight budget. So let's also eliminate that. Basically, everything in the Departmento of Rivas, which is the southern or the southwestern Departmento of the country on the west side of the lake, that's Lake Nicaragua or Lago Cosibolsa, we can eliminate that. That is the really expensive area. There are little isolated parts of Rivas, uh, mostly north and in the city itself of Rivas that are quite reasonable. But you're talking about very small areas in a large area that's almost all expensive. And there's a, there's a possibility of that price going up over time as that becomes more and more touristy. As we continue north, and there's no real reason that this is connected, it just happens to be kind of connected to Rivas, the city of Granada on Lago Nicaragua is much more expensive than other cities in Nicaragua. It is a tourist center, and so there's just a lot of expats either vacation there or actually live there, and that just brings up the overall price. Nothing like San Juan del Sur. San Juan del Sur will see explosive prices compared to the rest of the country. Granada, you could see rents as high as double, which is not that bad, but if you're on a tight budget, obviously paying double for your rent is an annoyingly high amount of money. So that is not a place we want to be. And little things like food and transportation will cost a little bit more. Everyone assumes if you live in Granada that you're going to pay a little bit more. You just can. It's, it's an upscale city. So let's knock that out. Now to the west of Granada, you have the witch villages or the Pueblos Blancos uh, and the area of Mazatepe, Hinotepe, uh, Didiamba, San Rafael del Sur, all the way to Pochamil on the coast. Most of that band is going to be not expensive, not like Granada, but more expensive than most of the country. This is a very upscale kind of suburban or semi-country region. You could work really hard and maybe find isolated deals in that area, so maybe don't rule it out completely if you visit it and just fall in love with it. It is a truly beautiful region. I love this region. That whole south of Managua band is fantastic, but assume you're going to be paying at least a little bit of a premium through there, but well within the range that Nicaraguans would normally pay. You're not talking about something extreme, just a little bit more. So probably not best on a tight budget. Of the first cities that are going to be truly affordable as we kind of come up through a kind of path up the west coast, we're going to find Messiah and then Managua itself. Messiah, while a completely independent city with its own culture, has kind of grown into being a suburb of Managua as the capital has expanded. That is just the nature of things. It is still slightly separated, but if you live there, you're using Managua all the time. Now, Messiah, I believe, maintains uh, a, an affordable affordability that the other cities in that direct area do not. So you may be okay with Messiah. And I know people who live there, and it's a very nice area, very accessible to Managua, easy to get to Granada, easy to get to lots of things. So it's definitely not going to be the cheapest, but it should be cheaper than the others. It's a decent sized city, uh, and a lot of people really, really like the Messiah general area, both the city itself and its surrounds. So could be could be a, a possibility, um, but it's an interesting spot because it's very desirable, it's very nice, but it's hard to put a, a finger on exactly what factors would drive someone to choose it, but it's absolutely fantastic, right? So as you go from uh, Messiah, we come into Managua. Now, the Messiah Road going into Managua is one of the most expensive districts in the country. All the really fancy neighborhoods of Managua are going to be near the Messiah Road with few exceptions, the Carretera Messiah, as it's called. So the, the stretch from Messiah into Managua is probably going to be just out of consideration. That is so desirable uh, all through all the little neighborhoods right off of that. 
super desirable. So that specific highway is probably not viable. But once you get into Managua proper, you have a large city, 1.3 million people, and lots and lots of, of available, very cost-effective housing. Of course, you can find more expensive housing sprinkled throughout the city, but you can find dirt cheap housing sprinkled all throughout the city as well. You have loads of options and you could live east, north, west, south, outside, inside. There's always going to be something affordable somewhere in the Managua zone. So definitely if you want bigger city, you want easy access to lots of hospitals, you want to be near the airport, you want uh, m many more food options, just a lot more variety in things. You may not be the absolute cheapest because you are in the capital. It is a larger city. There is a little bit more hustle and bustle and that normally comes with a little bit of cost, but it also comes with some conveniences, right? You're not going to travel as far for most things. However, However, it is worth noting that Managua, while I do walk around it and I do tell people it's a lot safer than you think, it is not a city designed for walking. And so while you may walk your local neighborhood to get the city benefits of Managua, often you are going to go a bit further afield and you'll find that going on foot is not practical because things really are sprawling. And so even just doing some shopping in an individual zone, you may find that you want to be taking taxis places. In general, Managua has the benefit that few people want to have cars there but that means you're paying for a lot of taxis and taxis are not unreasonable, but they're more expensive than other areas. So uh, Managua can come with its cost. It really depends on what your lifestyle is going to be like. You could pay a little bit more for a better apartment and be in a spot where you take fewer taxis. You can have things delivered to you. Of course, Managua will be cheaper for that. There's more things that can be delivered. Uh, but in general, I think Managua is going to be not the cheapest, but a reasonable option. And remember, all of Nicaragua is very low cost, very affordable. So when we're talking about which ones are better or worse, the differences are not that big. Outside of Managua, and you could consider this part of the city or not, on one side you have Tipitapa, which I really don't know too much about. I've been in it a million times, but it's always passing through. It doesn't have a great reputation, but I think it's improved a lot. It's definitely low cost. On the west side is Ciudad Sandino, which is even bigger. I'm in Ciudad Sandino all the time, and honestly, it's a really nice place. A lot of expats like it. A lot of Nicaraguans like it. A lot of other Nicaraguans will look horrified when you say you're going to live there, and they'll tell you it's so dangerous you couldn't possibly survive there a single day, yet people live there and love it because it's a very nice up-and-coming gentrifying area whose prices haven't caught up with the state of gentrification. So that could be a good place to get into. Uh, it does have easy accessibility into Managua, easy accessibility out to Leon, uh, is not far from the lake, has really good breezes, has a lot of new developments going in where you could get into a very small house, which is probably what you'll be looking at given your budgetary concerns. Generally, a small two bedroom is the way to go. That is the Nicaraguan thing. That is how Nicaraguans view you know, living on your own. If you're moving out from family, uh, that's generally the way you go for entry level. You can, in theory, find, especially in Managua, uh, one-bedroom, super small apartments, but they are the exception. They're very, very rare. Generally, though, again, <laughs> we're talking everything is so cheap, you're probably going to want to look at low-cost uh, two-bedroom, either an apartment, rare, or a standalone two-bedroom house in a close-knit community, common, or if you're in like Managua or one of the old cities, then maybe one of the more traditional just one or two bedroom uh, or three bedroom houses uh, in the city centers that will be their own style just because uh, they're, they're old city houses. Um, so sometimes you get uh, some, some quirky things there, but uh, that's, that's pretty much what you're gonna find. Assume you're looking at a two bedroom house almost always. That is gonna be the bread and butter of low cost, very nice living in Nicaragua. Uh, as we head out from Managua, we immediately, to, this is kind of to the northwest, we're immediately going to go into the Leon zone, uh, into Departamento Leon, and there, once we leave Ciudad Sandino and head up, we're going to run into a couple of the small cities like Nagarote and La Paz Centro. These have very low cost living, but there's no major city, no major things like grocery stores and stuff. Often you're traveling into Leon for something like that or into Managua, uh, but they are very low cost cities. And if you're willing to shop at the market and put up with very small, like, like semi supermarkets for most of your everyday stuff, you can get a little bit cheaper than the big cities but only a tiny bit, but you may like the small city living or you can get into the villages outside of any of these cities. And of course the villages are cheaper. 
but don't have the amenities. And so if you're going to be going out to restaurants and stuff, you want to go to a nice supermarket, you probably want to be somewhere within a city zone. If you don't care about those things and you're like, I'm cooking at home all the time, I'm going to send someone out for groceries or I'm going to order them in or just I'm going to solve those things some other way. A village might be perfect for you, maybe country living. There, there are low cost options all over the place. Uh, from those, we come to Leon itself. Leon is the second largest city in the country, but is also one of the cheapest. Basically, everywhere in Leon is going to be super uh, affordable and super safe. Leon uh, really kind of shines as being a low cost city. Everything is cheap, right? Taxis are cheap, electric is cheap. Uh, um, Food is pretty cheap, housing is cheap, access to the beach is the cheapest in the country from a city, uh, all kinds of things. Like you really do have a lot of options in Leon and it's very, very safe, has a lot of nightlife. It is a lively young city uh, with a lot going on. So definitely Leon should be on your radar. It's a great city, that's where I live. There's a reason why I live here. The expat community is growing quickly because of my show. Um, traditionally, there is not very much of one. If we head up Farther northwest, we run into Chinandega. Chinandega is famously the richest city in the country, uh, but the cost of living is actually quite low. So you may actually be very much in line with Leon. Obviously a tiny bit more, but we're talking tiny bits more. Smaller city, but still pretty big. Very few expats. Both Leon and Chinandega are famous for how hot they are. Generally, that's gonna you're gonna wanna rule them out for those reasons, or if anyone's gonna rule them out, that is the reasons that they do so. Uh, beyond Chenandega, you have a very lightly populated area. Even between the two, it's it's relatively lightly populated. This is a, a, a pretty empty part of Nicaragua, surprisingly because it has so much coastline, it's so close to Honduras, it's so close to the, the Gulf of Fonseca, um, and yet it just doesn't have a lot of people. I don't know why so, so many people didn't move into this zone, but they just haven't. So there aren't as many options up here as you may expect because it's so empty. Leon and Chinandega together represent Nicaragua Occidental, generally a very empty but very affordable region. So pretty much anything in that zone is going to be quite affordable, very affordable compared to Managua and its surrounds or Carrasso, which is directly south of Managua or Messiah or Granada. So some of those zones like Granada were expensive, like we said, but even the more outskirts of Managua are generally gonna be more expensive than Occidental. The two, the two zones, Leon and Chinandega, just are very, very affordable, but you are definitely looking at more rural living with isolated city centers. If that's something you like, then it's perfect. If it is not, then obviously it is not. All over the country, you have small villages or very small cities. And so there are little options in between things all over. Most of them are going to be relatively similar. You can pick closer to beaches, closer to the capital, closer to the mountains, depending on what factors you like, or closer to the south, because you really hope to spend a lot of time going to Costa Rica or whatever. Um, but living in most of them are going to be relatively similar. You're going to be looking at lower cost with very few amenities. And so mostly you'll be choosing what city center you'll be using for uh, your grocery shopping and those kinds of things and making your determinations from there. So you do have options everywhere. So when I only list a couple city centers, don't take that as you don't have options. You have a million options. If you want to be in a city, you have these options. If you want to be in the countryside, there are loads and you could spend a lot of time exploring and of course you could get a long-term apartment stay in one of the cities that you're interested in and explore its surrounding villages for a long time uh, put in two years and then move out to a village once you feel more accomplished in your expatriate. Uh, and, and and actually that's a really good option um, put, you know, if uh, we're going to talk about Esteli here in a moment. So if you wanted to live in Esteli, you could find an affordable apartment in Esteli, maybe a small house, put in two years. Long-term rentals will be very affordable. You can buy furniture and stuff. You don't have to worry about that because you are planning on staying. And then if you are more of a countryside person or a small village person, then you could look at San Rafael del Norte, uh, San Sebastian de Yali, uh, San Isidro, and other areas that are not too far from Esteli, uh, and make a determination over time which ones you like. You'll, you'll know how easy it is to get to and from Esteli. You'll know if you want to use public transportation or have your own car. And then you could take some time, get to know people, look for an apartment or a hotel or a hotel or a house uh don't buy a hotel in a small town that would be very foolish uh or a house that you like and you could either buy or rent um 
and work that out and then and then feel comfortable doing that jumping straight into uh, a really small town in um, an out of the way non touristy area of Nicaragua will be challenging right you can do it it's safe but the ability to do normal everyday things like go grocery shopping, get things delivered to you, find uh, other expats to get resources from be very hard. So balance those things. The, uh, the highlands uh, represent a really important region of the country that a lot of people uh, really like. There's three major cities in the highlands. That's Esteli, Matagalpa, that's the biggest one, and Hinotega. That's the smallest of the three and the coolest, it's the highest altitude. All three are pretty nice. All three have slightly higher crime than the Western cities, uh, but not, you know, again, Nicaragua is very safe. Uh, for the most part, these are very affordable. Prices tend to be pretty low, uh, not quite as low as Occidental for whatever reason. There's just a general higher population because of the elevation. People really like living up there, uh, but mostly mostly Nicaraguans. There's a, a lot fewer expats in the Highland region, and those that are up there tend to be spread out more. But you have a lot of options up there in beautiful areas with relatively mild temperatures, right? Managua, warm. Leon and Chinadega, hot. The highlands, still warm, but not as warm as the rest of the country. So you've got a large area, and between those three cities is just mountains covered in small villages. So you could go to find the city that you like, uh, and then from there, if you want to do a village, that area is really good for villages because it's a, it's a very dense multi-village um, area. To the north of Esteli, there are uh, two departmentos, uh, Madrid and Nueva Segovia. Those are extremely not popular uh, with expats, but they do have higher elevations, so a little bit better temperatures. They have nice little cities. They have little towns you could go to. Acatal is the main city uh, in the area. Somoto is a smaller city in the area. Uh, so you have you have some choices up there if for some reason you want to explore up there uh, and decide like some beautiful stuff for sure Jalapa in the very far north uh, is is relatively well known um, and and you're still you know with public transportation you can still get back to Managua but if you're looking for really affordable living I think those zones for an expat are going to be more expensive because you're going to want to use the airport you're going to want to you're going to have paperwork from time to time you have to do in Managua you don't want to get generally, I would say, farther away than Esteli or Hinotega from Managua as an expat on a budget. If you have unlimited money, and by unlimited money, I mean you're on a $3,000 a month budget, right? You want to be super far away. You want to be in Jalapa on the Honduran border, and you're going to hire a driver to take you into Managua <clears throat> once a week. Who cares, right? Like, use your money however you want. But if you're if you're trying to be super budget conscious, you want to stay within a certain uh, commutable range to Managua because when you need to do something, you're just going to need to go there, whether it's flying in or out or dealing with uh, an office or something or doing your shopping. Like, at first, everyone's like, I'm not going to Managua for shopping. But if you want to make your life really affordable and practical, you probably are going to use Managua. Now, moving south of the highlands, there are a couple of regions that exist a little bit out of the way. And again, basically no tourists go here. No expats live here. I mean, there's some. No place is 100% devoid of expats, but you get pretty far out there. And that is the departmentos of Boaco, which is directly east or slightly northeast of Managua. Uh, and slightly southeast, actually really close to straight east of Managua, is Chantales with its capital of Huigalpa. These are very small cities as capitals go. They have large, uh, famously, uh, cattle regions. They do have some amount of uh, hilly terrain. They're not uh, super flat. Uh, and they uh, are a little bit more inland. So you're going to be very far away from the ocean, very far away from the tourists, but not too far from Managua, realistically. And so they can be pretty good choices that I've not filmed. I certainly want to. Really looking forward to getting out there. I think there'll be a lot of good content from that zone because nobody goes out there. It'd be very new. Uh, but those are kind of your major choices. Of course, there's out of the way places, super eclectic places. You've got a lot of options, right? Safe and affordable is the name of the game in Nicaragua. But for Donald Johnson, realistically, as an expat who is moving here for your first time abroad, I think your main choices are going to be Messiah, if you want a smaller city, willing to pay a little bit extra, but want to be close to the capital. But a lot of people don't want to be in the capital, so that makes sense. Leon, if you want to be a little bit farther away, want that extreme safety and lower cost of living, 
but are willing to put up with a little bit farther travel times to things and warmer temperatures. Esteli, Hinotega, and Metagalpa, all three of them, very viable. You're willing to be a little bit farther away from the capital, spend a little bit more, probably not as much as Messiah, uh, but have those cooler temperatures and live in the mountains or mountainous areas, very nice as well. They would be personally my first choice. If it was only me, my family prefers Leon because of the ocean. Of course, now we have friends here, we wouldn't move, but uh, if it was purely coming down to terrain and architecture and those things, I do find that Leon's uh, colonial constraints are a little bit of a negative for me. Uh, beautiful to visit, but to live in uh, all colonial structures comes with its negatives. And then basically looking at Managua proper, if you are looking for a larger city, you want your shopping and your groceries and all that to be as convenient as possible. You want the, the easy access to nightlife and everything without having to uh, compromise, but you're willing to live in a bigger city. And remember that while there's good public transportation everywhere in the country, uh, Managua, People tend to use quite a bit of taxis. You're probably gonna have a little bit more cost with that. Those are your main areas to consider. Uh, if, if it was me and it was my first time moving to Nicaragua, I would look at putting in one to two years in one of those, maybe come down and do a short trip where you zip around a few of those places, get a feel for the different regions. You don't have to hit everything, right? If you hit Managua, Leon, and one of the highland cities, probably Matagalpa, Esteli would be a second choice. That alone should give you a survey uh, that tells you, do you wanna be in the capital region, Occidental, or the mountains? Um, and then you can decide, do you want to be beach? Do you want to be city? Do you want to be mountains? Do you want to be, you know, and so forth. Uh, you, you can make pretty good decisions from there. Do a one to two year long-term lease, buy your uh, appliances and such. That's the secret to keeping the cost down. You'll take all those things with you. So when you make a final decision, you just move it. Moving here is very cheap. Getting people to help you move, very cheap. Those are not things that are gonna hit your budget significantly but renting appliances is. So you want to do everything you can to avoid, if you're, if you're really cost conscious, avoid the short-term rentals, get into a long-term rental as soon as possible. So a very quick, quick survey trip to find where you want to get a long-term, get the long-term, and just dedicate yourself to learning what you need to know to make your long, long-term decision. And of course, you could rent for forever. There's no need to ever buy in Nicaragua, but if you decide to buy, you can do really well. With a couple of years under your belt, you'll probably be able to buy a very nice house for potentially, for a single person, under 30,000, very doable, under 20,000, absolutely possible. You probably don't wanna go that cheap. But if you're being cost conscious, I've talked to people, I know people personally who've, who've tried to get as close to 10,000 as possible. I don't know anyone who's actually, as an expat, got below 10,000, but getting into like the 11, 12, 13,000 range, it gotta be a lot of work, doable. Getting into the $20,000 range though, absolutely, I could go do it within the next 48 hours and be in a city that I like. Getting under 30,000, loads of flexibility. Now, of course, you're, you're talking about very conservative places. You're talking about small, you know, conservative living, but comfortable, safe, attractive, nice neighborhoods, nice neighbors, or out in the country, whatever it is you're looking for, you'll have options at those price ranges. And of course, if you can spend more than that, sky's the limit, right? Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe, Donald Johnson. I hope this was useful for you and anyone else who is watching looking for where in the country you should be looking for the most budget, budget conscious options. And uh, we hope to see you guys in Nicaragua. Ask your questions, get down below and uh, ask away, post in the in the questions because that's how we find out what people need to know, right? That's, that's how we learn. So uh, thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And I will see all of you tomorrow.